Hello? Wow. I was disconnected. I don't know what happened. <coughs> but the, the live broadcast just ended by itself. I don't know why that is so. But I'm back now. Let's see who who is going to join. My wife is back to the gate. You're welcome. Please, let's invite everybody. Let's tell them that we are back. Let's tell them that we are back. I don't know why I was disconnected. <laughs> you see, you must, you must hear the truth. <coughs> you must hear the truth. <coughs> Please help me, help me download the first one. My wife is back. And uh, let's see who else is going to join us. Please, as you are coming, share, let me share the link. Let me share the link and invite people to come. Tell them that we are back. A lot of people will not know that we are back again. Please, invite them to come. You must hear the gospel today. The world must hear the gospel. Nothing will stop this broadcast. Please, let's share the link and invite people to come. Who else is coming to join us today? We are talking about how to be sure of heaven. How to be sure of heaven. How to be sure of heaven. Let's see who is going to join us today. Is anybody there? Can you hear me? Ah, Jacob Sally, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you. Abraham Jasper, you're welcome. I don't know what happened. I was I was just disconnected. But thank God I'm back again. Please, as you're coming in, help share the video. Help share the video so that people will know that we are back. Help share the video so people will know that we we are back. My brother Ugo Chuko, you're welcome. Please, let's share the video and let people come back. We, we had, you know, close to 15 persons online before, but now I can see only four. Please, let's share, let's share the video and invite them to come again. Ugo Choco, please help me share the video. And um, Abraham Jasper, help me share the video. <coughs> So that everybody will come back again this topic is too is too important you know for people to miss let them come and be part of this discussion please share 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 share, share the video <coughs> share the video let's get people to Okay, Abraham, you shared. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Gift blessing, Amos, you are welcome. I'm going, I'm going to just wait for like two minutes so that more people will come, you know, before I continue teaching. Thank you so much. You are, you are all welcome back. Gift blessing, Amos, you are welcome. Thank you so much. I don't know why I was disconnected, you know, why the broadcast ended. Thank you for sharing the video. And um, in the next one minute, I'll begin to teach. I'll continue what we were saying. Thank you for sharing. Gift blessing, Amos. Thank you for sharing the video. Okay. I'll, be, I'll, I'll resume in a few seconds. 
So we have been we have been we have been talking about heaven. Ugochuku, you have shared. Thank you so much for sharing. God bless you. God bless you for sharing. Now we have said already that there is one way to heaven. One way to heaven. And that way is Jesus. One way to heaven and that way is Jesus. And anybody who places faith in Jesus is already seated with Christ in heavenly places. Such a person is already seated with Christ in heavenly places. So, we have said there is only one way to heaven. One way to heaven and that way is Jesus Christ. Let's not be walking around with the mindset that Thomas, Thomas had when he told Jesus that we don't know where you are going. How do we know the way to get there? But if you are a Christian and a believer, then you should have known Jesus already. And Jesus said to Thomas, he said, you know the way. You have seen me. So just believe in me. I am the way to heaven. I am the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. So what I'm saying today is that anybody who has placed faith in Jesus already, such a person has believed in the way to heaven. And such a person is supposed to be sure of heaven. And if anybody is doubting heaven, such a person is not yet born again. Such a person is not yet a believer. Prince Faith, Prince Efe, you are welcome. Patrick Dente, you are welcome. So, we were talking about how to be sure of heaven. How to be sure of heaven. That is the topic for those who are just coming. How to be sure of heaven. And we have said that there is only one way to heaven. And that way is not Ten Commandments. That way is not the laws of Moses. That way is not do's and don'ts. That way is not religious rituals. That way is not church tradition. That way is not tying your hair and your ear. That way is not not wearing trousers. That way is not not putting earrings. So that way is a person. And that way is Jesus. He is the only way. And if I believe him, I'm in heaven already. If I believe him, I'm sure of my eternal salvation. And if the trumpet sounds any time, as long as I have faith in Jesus, I am sure of heaven already. Okay? So we are going to continue with our, our scripture reading. We've already read about two scriptures, you know, two Bible verses. We have read Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 24, and we have read John chapter 14, verse 1, you know, to, to 6. Okay. So, I'm going to show you another way to be sure of heaven. And that way, to be sure of heaven, you will see it in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14. Mr. Kola Adeshina, you're welcome. So now please get your Bibles. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. And let's open Albert. Albert Kisha, you're welcome, sir. I'm glad to have you on the platform. Pastor Samson, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you on the platform. Now, what are we discussing? We are discussing how to be sure of heaven. How to be sure of heaven. And we already read John chapter 14, for those who are just coming. And the Bible told us, Jesus was saying, He said, believe in God and believe in me. Let not your heart be troubled at all. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions there, and I am going there to prepare them for your, for your coming. And then after I have prepared them, I will come back and take you so that you will be where I am. And then Thomas asked Jesus, we don't know where you are going, and we don't know how to get there. And Jesus was, so, was, 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 as, was surprised that Thomas, who had been with him as a disciple, could ask such a question saying that he doesn't know the way to heaven and that he doesn't even know where Jesus is going. 
And Jesus said, you know the way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will get to the Father except passing through me. And I am saying today, I'm re-echoing the word of Jesus. And that is that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is not one of the ways. He is the only way to heaven. He is the truth and he is the life. Anyone who believes in him is on his way to heaven already. So, when Christians tell you that they are not sure of heaven, that it is only God who knows the way to heaven, they are only speaking out of unbelief, they are only speaking out of ignorance and out of fear. Why? Because they are thinking that it is ten commandments and traditions that will take them to heaven. But I have shown you, I already showed you now in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 24, that now God has shown us the way to heaven. And this way to heaven has nothing to do with Ten Commandments, has nothing to do with church traditions and rituals, has nothing to do with tithe and offering, has nothing to do with self-righteousness. But that way to heaven is just trusting in Jesus. And then you are on your way to heaven. So now, I just posted Matthew chapter 7. Let's look at it. How you will be sure of heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 to 14. I'm going to read. Now listen. Listen carefully. I posted it there already. Matthew 7. Jesus is speaking. He said heaven can be entered only through the narrow gates. Now take note of the word only. So it is not so many things. Just one. Only through the narrow gates. The highway to hell is broad and its gates is wide enough for all the multitude who choose its easy way. But the gateway to life is small. Don't forget that Jesus already said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, but the gateway to life is small and the road is narrow and only a few find it. Now, I want to make bold to say today that even though we may have billions of Christians all over the world, but I have come to realize that over 90% of Christians do not believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. They believe more in Ten Commandments and their morality and how good they are. So, only few, only very few, less than 10% of Christians worldwide have found the narrow gate. Only few of them believe in the, in the narrow gate. And who is that narrow gate? Jesus is the narrow gate. Jesus is that narrow gate. You see, the way is so narrow and that the way is a person. Jesus is that way. He is so narrow. He is so narrow that only faith in him can pass through. He is so narrow that you cannot carry ten commandments alongside to pass through. You cannot bring your traditions and your rituals to pass through. Only one way, one narrow way. And that way is the way of faith. And faith is the only criteria to pass through that narrow gate. And only few have found that faith in Jesus. Only few. Other people are trying to carry their, their morality. They are trying to carry their self-righteousness. They are trying to carry ten commandments. Now, do you know that God gave a total of about 613 commandments and you are trying to go to heaven by commandments, how will you keep all of them? You can't carry all of those commandments through the narrow gate. The gate is so narrow that only faith in Christ Jesus can pass through. That is why if you are depending on commandments, you will not pass through the gate because Jesus is that gate. Jesus is that narrow way. Anyone who believes in him has passed through the narrow way already. Now, somebody wrote a question there. The question from Abraham Jasper, right? Abraham Jasper is asking, what if the reverse is the case? We are Christians. 
and religion among other religions happens to say like examples okay now i already answered that question but you, you didn't hear me i think i was disconnected so you are asking what if muslims and buddhists say that buddha or muhammad is the only way to heaven that means that we will not make heaven you see I believe in Jesus. The Muslims believe in Muhammad. Buddhists believe in Buddha. They are free to believe whatsoever they want to believe. But I will only speak of what I believe. I will only speak of what I believe. Let the Muslims come and preach to me that Muhammad is the way to heaven. Then they will tell me if Muhammad died for their sins, then they will tell me if Muhammad went to the cross for their sins. Let the Buddhists come and tell me that Buddha is the way. Then they will tell me if Buddha died for their sins. Then they will tell me if Buddha went to the cross for their sins. But if they cannot prove to me that Muhammad died on the cross, then they cannot prove to me that Muhammad is the way to heaven. If they cannot prove to me that Buddha died for their sins, then they cannot prove to me that Buddha is the way to heaven. And some people, you know, are also believing in the laws of Moses and in the Ten Commandments, especially Christians. They cannot prove to me that the laws of Moses will take them to heaven. They can't prove it. Because the Jews had the laws. They had all the Ten Commandments and all the rituals. If those rituals and those ten commandments can take anybody to heaven, why did Jesus still come to die? Is, is it not clear enough that ten commandments cannot take you to heaven? If ten commandments can take you to heaven, then Jesus would not have come. All the Jews would have gone to heaven because they had the commandments. But the Bible says, God has concluded all on that sin, both Jews and Gentiles. So that he will have mercy upon all. So if you can just place faith in him, you are sure of heaven. I hope I answered your question, Abraham Jasper. Now, let's look at the, the, the Bible verse I, I, I posted. We were looking at Matthew chapter 7, which I said that there is only one narrow gate to heaven. And that narrow gate is Jesus. And only faith in him passes through that narrow gate. All your self-righteousness and all your commandments will not pass through that gate. Only faith in him will pass through that gate. Now, I want to prove to you that Jesus is that narrow gate. And if you believe in him, you are sure of heaven already. John chapter 10 verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9. Jesus is that narrow gate. He is the door. No man will get to the Father without passing through, through him. Yomi Jegede, you are welcome. Mrs. Inkiru, you are welcome back. I'm glad to have every one of you on this platform. Now, John chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus was speaking. He said, I am the door. I am the door. You see, before he said, Jesus can, that, that heaven can be entered only through the narrow gate. And now he is saying that I am the door. He didn't say that I am one of the doors. He said I am the door. He didn't say I am a door. Not one. Not one of the many doors to heaven. I am the door. I am that narrow gate. Anyone who places faith in me is sure of heaven already. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Oh my God. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will have an assurance of heaven. He will be sure of heaven. He will not be afraid whether he will go to heaven or not. If any man enters by me, he will be saved. You are welcome, Mrs. Omonike. I'm, I'm glad to have you on the platform. You are welcome. So what is Jesus saying? That he is the door. He is the door. So you want, to, you want to enter heaven? Jesus is the door. The Ten Commandments is not the door. 
The laws of Moses is not the door. Your self-righteousness is not the door. Jesus is the door. So he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Now listen to this. Even if you are a prostitute and you enter by him, you will be saved. Even if you are a thief and you enter by him, you will be saved. That was why the thief on the cross that was crucified with Jesus, because he believed in Jesus, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. That is why the prostitutes and the tax collectors are entering the kingdom of God. If you, if you enter by me, you will be saved. Did you see that? Now, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. Listen to me, guys. If you believe in Jesus, you have life and you have it abundantly. You have eternal life and you have it abundantly. You, are, you can be rest assured of heaven. You don't have to be afraid whether you will go to heaven or not. If you pass through the door, who is Jesus? If you believe in him, you have life. And not just life, but you have life in abundance. You can be rest assured of heaven. You can be rest assured. But it is a pity today that even Christians do not believe. They don't have an assurance of heaven. They are still doubting whether they will go to heaven or not. They are looking at their, their themselves. They are looking at how many commandments they've obeyed to know whether they will go to heaven or not. What an ignorance. We are still looking at ten commandments and rituals and traditions to, to know whether we will go to heaven or not. Christians, I'm amazed. And my heart bleeds to find out that over 90% of Christians are not sure of heaven. Now listen to me. Let me tell you how hypocritic most Christians are. Now they will tell you only God knows who will go to heaven. That they are not sure of heaven. Now if we are not sure of heaven, why do we go, to, go for evangelism? And preach to people and tell them that if they believe in Jesus, they will be saved. How will you go and tell unbelievers to come and believe in Jesus and that they will be saved and they will go to heaven? When you yourself don't believe that that Jesus can take you to heaven. I mean, is that not, is that not hypocrisy? Is that not a deception? You go for evangelism and tell people to give their life to Christ. That if they give their life to Christ, that they will be saved. That if they can just believe in Jesus, they will go to heaven. They will make heaven. And then, after they have given their life to Jesus, you now bring them to church. And you will now, you will now start telling them that it is ten commandments that will save them. Now, if you are not sure that Jesus can save, then don't go and preach about Jesus. Don't tell people about Jesus. Because you yourself, you are not sure. You are putting your faith in Ten Commandments and in the laws of Moses. But when you are going to preach to unbelievers, you, are, you, are, you, you don't tell them about commandments. You tell them that they should accept Jesus and they will be saved. And now they have accepted Jesus, they come to church and you begin to tell them, you begin to kill their faith in Jesus. And you begin to tell them that it is the amount of commandments that they have obeyed that will take them to heaven. That is hypocrisy, my friends. Listen to me. If I, if, 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 if I were, if I were a, an unbeliever, if I was not born again, if I, if I was not born again, and then you come to me and you tell me that I should accept Jesus Christ, but you are not sure if this Jesus can take me to heaven, but I should just accept him. Do you know what? I will not accept that kind of Jesus. Any Jesus that you are not sure will take me to heaven, I will not accept him. If you came to me and you told me, oh, accept Jesus and then do some good works to go to heaven, I will not accept that kind of Jesus. So. I will only accept the Jesus who died on the cross for my sin. 
I will only accept the Jesus who is the, is the door, who is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only Jesus I will accept. So, if you know of another Jesus who cannot take people to heaven, then don't preach that Jesus to me at all. If you are thinking that Jesus is not strong enough, his blood is not potent enough to take you to heaven, then don't tell me about that Jesus, that kind of Jesus. The Jesus I know and the Jesus I believed in is the Jesus that is the way, the truth, and the life. Is the Jesus that, that John 3, 16 was talking about. That if, if that God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It is only that Jesus that can give eternal life that I will believe in. And that is the Jesus that I have believed in. That is why I have an assurance of heaven. But if you don't believe in this Jesus, well, I'm sorry to say that your self-righteousness and all your good works cannot take you to heaven. Now, I have a question here. Somebody asked the question, can someone's faith stand in the gap or speak for someone else? Well, I'm going to teach that another day, but I will give you an answer. But I'm going to teach that another day. Okay? Now, <laughs> you remember when Apostle Paul was talking about a Christian who is married to an unbeliever. And he said that that Christian who is married to an unbeliever, that if that unbeliever is pleased to remain with that Christian, if that unbeliever is pleased to remain with that Christian in marriage, that that Christian should not divorce the unbeliever. Why? Because you don't know if your faith can make that unbelieving wife convert or be saved. And Paul, Apostle Paul said that if you, who is a believer, you are married to somebody who is an unbeliever, that because of your faith, your children will be holy. Your children will be saved. But I will, I will keep that for another day because that is not my topic. Okay? That is not my topic. I will keep that for another day. Okay? Again, you remember the, the um, 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 Ethiopian eunuch who met Philip. Now, the Bible says that that Ethiopian eunuch was saved and all his household, because he was saved, he was baptized and all everybody was baptized. The same thing, what happened in, in, in the house of Cornelius too. Okay? But that is another day, okay? So, but today, we are looking at the only way to be sure of heaven. And I have told you that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And I've showed you that he is the door. He is the door to heaven. And if you know any other way to heaven, I'm sorry to say you may be on, not you may, I know for certain that you are on the wrong path. If you are trying to get to heaven by another way, you are on the wrong path. We know only one way to heaven, and that way is Jesus. So if I believe in Jesus, I'm sure of my salvation already. I'm sure of heaven already. Now, but let me show you what has happened, what has happened to church people. What has happened to Christians. Galatians chapter 1. I want to show you what has happened to our pastors and our bishop. You know, why they, why, why they no longer believe in that same Jesus that they go out to preach. They now believe more in themselves and in what they can do. In how many commandments they can obey. So they don't, they don't believe in Jesus anymore. So let's see what Galatians chapter, chapter 1 says. Galatians chapter 1. Now, one of the reasons why over 90% of Christians are not sure of heaven is because they have been introduced to a different gospel, to a false gospel. They have been introduced to the gospel of Moses, not the gospel of Jesus. So Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Let's look, at, let's, look at, let's look at what it says. I'm going to read. I am amazed. Listen to this. I am amazed. Apostle Paul is saying, I am amazed that you are turning away so soon from God 
who in his love and mercy invited you to share the eternal life he gives through Christ. I'm amazed that you once believed that Jesus is the only way to heaven. I'm amazed that now you no longer believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. You are now believing in Ten Commandments and morality and traditions of men. I am amazed that you are turning away so soon from the God who invited you in his love and mercy to share the eternal life that, that is in Christ. Now watch. He said, you are already following a different way to heaven. Over 90% of Christians are following a different way to heaven. They are following the broad way and it will lead them to hell if they don't turn back to believe in Jesus Christ, the only way to heaven. Now, look at what Apostle Paul said. You are following a different way to heaven which really doesn't go to heaven at all. That way of Ten Commandments, that way of traditions, that way of rituals, that way of morality does not lead to heaven at all. If it doesn't lead to heaven, then it will lead to hell. But I know one way that leads to heaven, and that way is Jesus. But it is a pity that over 90% of Christians have rejected Jesus as the only way to heaven. Now watch. But why? Why is it that over 90% of Christians are following the wrong way? Are following the broad way that leads to, to hell? Why are they following the broad way? Verse 7 says, For there is... Okay, verse 7. For there is no other way than the one we showed you. So there is no other way. There is no other way except the one we showed you. And let me ask you if you are a Christian. What way did you accept when you accepted Jesus? What made you give your life to Jesus? Was it because you were good enough? I gave my life to Jesus because I was told that Jesus died for my sins. And that if I believe in him, I will be saved. And I will have eternal life. And I will go to heaven. I knew that I could not do it by myself. But the, most Christians also accepted Jesus because they believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. But now they are following a different way. So, and Apostle Paul said, there is no other way. Jesus is the only way. Now, look at what he said. You are being fooled by those who twist and change the truth concerning Christ. And can I tell you, the whole world in every country has been fooled by some religious people who call themselves pastors. And they are preaching the laws of Moses as the criteria for salvation. They are preaching Ten Commandments as the criteria for salvation. They have twisted the gospel of Christ. And look at verse 8. Look at what Apostle Paul said. He said, let God's cause fall on anyone, including myself, who preaches any other way to be saved. If I come tomorrow and tell you that there is another way to be saved, apart from Jesus, let God's cause fall on me. That's what Apostle Paul said. And that is what I'm saying today. If tomorrow you hear me say that there is another way to be saved apart from faith in Jesus, know that I have backslidden. Know that I have fallen if I say that. Know that I have lost my faith if I say that. Why? Because I know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's the only way to, 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 to salvation. Now watch. Apostle Paul said, if an angel even comes from heaven, and tell you of another way, apart from that way that you accepted, if an angel comes from heaven, don't even believe him. Let God's cause fall on that angel. I will say it again, verse 9. If anyone preaches any other gospel than the one you received, let God's cause fall upon him. Now, what is Apostle Paul saying? That the Galatians, who believe that Jesus is the only way, they now started trying, they, they, they now left that their faith, and they were not trying to be circumcised and to obey the laws of Moses to be saved. 
The same thing that is happening today in our churches. And Apostle Paul said, let God's cause fall upon anyone who is preaching a different way to heaven. Is it possible, I have a question here, is it possible for the living to intercede for the dead who wasn't a Christian so that he or she can make heaven? Well, I think that is a Catholic doctrine. As a Catholic, that is a, a, a Catholic doctrine. You know, you see, <laughs> when that person was alive, that person who is dead now, when he was alive, he heard the gospel of Jesus. And he refused to accept Jesus. He heard the gospel. And he refused to accept Jesus. So, now, he is dead. And once you are dead, the next thing is judgment. If that person didn't hear the gospel, it's a different thing. But he heard, if he heard the gospel and he refused to accept Jesus, well, he's dead. I cannot be interceding for him. He's dead already. Catholics have a reason why they do that. Maybe they will explain that better. But in the scripture, after death comes judgment. Okay? So, if you are following a different gospel, you are believing all the lies that they are telling all over the world, it doesn't matter who is telling you, if it's a bishop or a pope or a reverend, let God's cause fall upon them. That's what the Bible says. Only those who believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven are the ones who are sure of their salvation and they are the ones who will make who, who will go to heaven? Any other person? The Bible says, let God's cause fall upon them. Now, Galatians chapter 5. I'm, I want to show you another scripture. Galatians chapter 5. You see, I don't know if, if you grew up in church, eh? If you grew up in church, you will know more of the Ten Commandments than Jesus. Will. You will hear so much of Ten Commandments and traditions and rituals than Jesus. Everybody know, you know, in, in our churches that we are growing up, what we used to hear, sin, 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 only sin and commandment, only sin and commandments. Why? Because they have twisted the gospel. They have elevated sin above the finished work of Jesus. They have elevated Ten Commandments above the finished work on the cross. Now look at what Galatians chapter 5 is saying. Why most Christians are not sure that they, that they will go to heaven? Because they are counting on circumcision. Galatians chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. Listen to me, Apostle Paul is saying. For this is serious. If you are counting on circumcision and keeping the Jewish laws to make you right with God, then... Christ cannot save you. If you are counting on circumcision, on morality, on rules and regulation, on the Ten Commandments, and on the laws of Moses to take you to heaven, to justify you, if you are counting on that, then Christ cannot save you. That is why I know that most people in church today who are counting on on themselves, on how many good works they have done to be saved, Christ cannot save them. Even if they are bishops and pastors, Christ cannot save them because they are trying to save themselves. And whoever tries to save his, his life will lose it. If you are trying to save yourself, you will not be saved. If you are trying to be saved by Ten Commandments, you will not be saved. So Apostle Paul said, if you are counting on circumcision, and on obeying the Ten Commandments to be saved, then Christ cannot save you because you have already gone out of the way. You are not following the way, the, the truth and the life. You are not following the narrow gates. You are going to follow Ten Commandments. And so, you will not be certain of heaven. Now, verse 3. Galatians chapter 5, verse 3. I will say it again. Anyone trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, must al always obey every other Jewish law 
or perish. Christ is useless to you if you are counting on clearing your debts to God by keeping those laws. Christ cannot save you. Christ is useless to you if you are counting on self-righteousness, if you are counting on the traditions of church and on tithe and offering and on religious rituals and on ten commandments to be saved. Christ cannot save you. Christ is useless to you. You have lost God's grace. You have fallen from grace. You have cut yourself off from Christ. So anybody who is believing that it is a law and a commandment that will take him to heaven, such a person will not be saved. Such a person has fallen from grace already. Such a person is trying to follow a different way to heaven instead of following Jesus alone as the only way to heaven. Now, I give you one last scripture to prove to you that if you are a believer, then you are assured of heaven. You are certain of heaven if you believe truly. Revelation chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3. If you keep on believing in Jesus, then I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that you are on your way to heaven already. Mrs. Susan, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you on the platform. So let's look at Revelations. Let's see what the Bible says about this heaven. Revelation chapter 3, from verse 3 to 5. I want to show you that if you believe you are in heaven already, because you have followed that one way, who is Jesus? And he is the only way to the Father. I read Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Now, listen. Go back to what you heard. And believed at first. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. What did you hear and believe at first? Why did you give your life to Jesus? Why did you become a Christian? What did you hear? I heard that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That was what I heard. And that is what I believe. And that is what I will keep on believing. And so Revelation is saying... That you should go back to what you believed at first. Go back to what you heard at first. Hold it firmly and turn to me again. Unless you do, I will come suddenly upon you, unexpected as a thief, and punish you. Jesus is saying to the church, go back to what you heard at first and believed. What did you hear at first? I heard John 3.16. And I gave my life to Christ. I heard John 3.16 that if I believe in Jesus, I will not perish. I will have eternal life. That was what I believed at first. And I am not turning away from that. I will never change my mind on that. But most Christians have turned away from that. And now they are not believing in Ten Commandments. They are not believing in traditions and in rituals. And in morality and in self-righteousness. Listen, the angel of, 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 of the Lord is saying, through John, who wrote the, the book of Revelation, and the angel is saying, go back to what you heard before and what you believed. Hold it firmly and turn to me again. I will come suddenly upon you, unexpectedly and punish you. So, if you want to be sure of heaven, go back to what you believed at first. And I know that most Christians, what they believed at first was that they cannot save themselves. That only Jesus will save them. Only Jesus will take them to heaven. That is what most Christians believed. But they have turned away from it. So, go back to what you believed at first. Go back to faith in Christ. If you can go back to faith in Christ, then you are in heaven already. You are registered in heaven already. Let me continue reading. Look at verse 4. Yes, even there in Sardis, 
some haven't soiled their garments with the world's filth. Anybody who turns from faith in Christ as the only criteria to be saved, such a person is soiling his garments. Anybody who turns from faith in Jesus and turn to the Ten Commandments and turn to rituals and traditions as a criteria for salvation, such a person has soiled his garment where the world feels. Such a person is trying to be saved by human efforts, by flesh. Such a person has soiled it, soiled his garments. Now listen, now pay attention. Those who are in Sadis, who still believe what they heard before, who still believe that Jesus Christ is the only criteria to heaven, those who are in our churches, Christians, who still believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven, these ones, they have not soiled their garments. These ones have not soiled their garments at all. They shall walk with me in white, so Jesus said. Anyone who still believes that Jesus is the only way to heaven, such a person will walk with Jesus in white. Hallelujah. That is why I know that I will walk with him in white. That is why I know that if you keep on believing in Jesus as the only way to heaven, you will walk with him in white. Verse 5. Everyone who conquers will be clothed in white. And I will not erase his name from the book of life. And I will announce him before my father and the angels that he is mine. I want to read that again. Everyone who overcomes, everyone who conquers, will be clothed in white. And I will not erase his name from the book of life. That is to tell you that if you are a believer, your name has been written in the book of life already. Your name has been written in the book of life. And if you keep on believing, your name will not be erased. And you will be clothed in white. And you will walk with Jesus. And Jesus will present you to the Father and say, This one belongs to me. This one has faith in me. But can I tell you the truth today? That most Christians are not believing in Jesus. Only those who still believe what they heard before about Jesus, they are the ones who Jesus will present to God the Father. That this one is mine. This one believed in me. When the whole world was believing in Ten Commandments, this one kept on believing in me. And because he kept on believing in me, he will be clothed in white. And his name will not be erased from the book of life. So listen, if you are a believer, congratulations to you. Your name is written in the book of life. And if you keep on believing, you shall be clothed in white. You shall be clothed in white. And Jesus will present you to the Father as belonging to him. And your name will not be erased. Now, somebody will say, Jesus said, but he that conquers, he that overcomes, will walk with me in white. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to overcome. I'm going to show you how to conquer. You know, our churches think that that place is talking about when you obey Ten Commandments. Anytime they preach about that, that place in, in Revelation, they are always saying that he that overcome, he that conquers. Now, and when they say that, they are thinking that it is he who is able to obey all the commandments is the one who has conquered. No, that is not true. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you what it means by he who conquers shall be clothed in white. I told you throughout this week, I'm talking about heaven. How to be sure of heaven. I have told you today that Jesus is the only way to heaven and anyone who passes through that way is in heaven already. That Jesus is the narrow gate and he is the door. Anyone who passes through him is saved already. And that if you believe in Christ, your name is written in the book of life already and will not be erased. Now tomorrow I'm going to continue this series. Four o'clock is the time tomorrow. Please get ready. Tomorrow I'm going to show you 
how you can be 100% sure that you will go to heaven. You don't have to, to, to be afraid whether you will go to hell or you will go to heaven. You don't have to be doubting. No. I'm going to give you how to be 100% sure that you will go to heaven. That you are a candidate of heaven and that your name is written in heaven already. I thank every one of you for coming Sunday. Akin Bawala, you're welcome. Akin, Ye, Akin Yele, Ayo Bami, you're welcome. Kind day prayer, you are all welcome. I appreciate every one of you. Please help me share the link, you know, and let all your friends listen to the video. I did a part one before. This is the part two for today. I did two videos today. So please go to my wall and listen to both videos and share it with your friends and let people know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And if you are listening to me, you are not born again, this is an opportunity for you to accept Jesus and be sure of heaven. So say with me, if you, want to, if you want to be sure of heaven, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. I know you are the only way, you are the only truth, and you are the only life. And you are the only one that can lead me to heaven. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Listen to me. If you pray that prayer with me, congratulations to you. You have just accepted the only way to heaven. And you are a candidate of heaven. God bless you. Thanks everyone for your comments, your questions, and for sharing the video. I love you so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Do have a lovely evening. God bless you. Bye-bye to you.